Hi guys, I'm Karen and I'm back with another Jigsaw Puzzle deep dive review. Today I'm going to be looking at this rainbow ice cream puzzle from Seago Puzzles. Disclaimer, they did send this to me for free, however I am not being paid to talk about it. Everything I'm about to say is my honest opinion. This puzzle is 750 pieces, it measures 21 inches by 21 inches. Let's start with the box design. I think it's really nice. Part of that comes from this just being a really fun, beautiful picture. But I really like this colorful gradient down here. They managed to fit a lot of information on the front of the box without it looking too cluttered. At first, I thought that the picture on the front was a little cut off and that it wrapped around the sides of the box. But looking at it closer, this is actually the entire picture, and then on the side, they just repeat parts of the image. I really like the back of the box, where you can see the entire picture, and it's surrounded, again, by that beautiful gradient. When you get the puzzle, it comes with four clear stickers that you have to cut to open it up. I love how the gradient continues on the bottom of the box. If you glued this together, you could then just use this bottom box as some nice storage on a shelf. The puzzle comes with a poster where you can see the image much larger, as well as a few other images that they also sell as puzzles. If you're not going to frame the puzzle, you could even just frame this poster and have it as some nice wall art. Looking back at the front of the box though, I did notice that the bottom of the picture was cut off from the front of the box, where the branding has covered it up. But since the entire image is on the back of the box and also on the poster, I don't think that's a very big deal. So the pieces come in a sealed plastic bag that you have to cut open. The cardboard is a neutral gray on the back, and it's okay quality, but it doesn't feel as substantial as the Cloudberries or Ravensburger or Eboo puzzles that I've done. The pieces are very glossy, so that's something to note if you have harsh lighting, but since the colors are so bright, I didn't have any problems seeing what I was looking at. There's not very much puzzle dust at all, which is definitely a plus if that bugs you, but there were quite a few pieces that weren't fully cut, and they didn't come apart very easily. One of them I even had to use scissors so that I wouldn't rip the cardboard completely off. This cardboard is definitely more prone to peeling up than other higher quality puzzles that I've done, but once I actually started working on the puzzle, it didn't make that much difference. It's just something that's a little annoying. So, okay, now it's time to start sorting the pieces. Since this puzzle is so clearly divided by color, I did the same thing that I did with the Cloudberries gradient puzzle, where I separated all the pieces by color to make a gradient rainbow, and all of this sorting took about 15 minutes. that I noticed as I was sorting the pieces is that one edge wasn't cut perfectly, so there's a little bit of a white outline. This does make it easier to find those edge pieces that go together, but if you're planning on hanging this up, it might not look perfect on your wall. So now it's time to go for it and put the puzzle together. Since it's only 750 pieces and the colors are so separated, I thought it would go pretty quickly, but it actually took me almost three hours, the same as easier thousand piece puzzles. And that's because the image is so textural that you're really just looking at very abstract patterns as you work on it and you only see the ice cream picture once you step back and take it all in. I wouldn't say that this is my favorite puzzle I've ever done, 
but I did enjoy it and I might return to it again if I want a medium difficulty smaller puzzle. It might have been easier if I had built the entire edge and let myself work on the easier sections of the puzzle first, but I thought it would look better for the video if I seemed to build it from one corner out to the other corner. I didn't often have a problem with pieces seeming to fit where they didn't go. There were a couple times that that happened, but that's probably also because I couldn't look too closely at the pieces without my head blocking the shot. But if I had a piece in the wrong spot, it was pretty easy to notice and move it to the correct place. The pieces are mostly standard puzzle shapes, but there are some unique cuts in there, which I thought was fun and made it a bit easier since you could look for a specific shape instead of just the color and texture. This is also like the Ibu square puzzles, where there isn't really an up or down, so you could have people sitting on every side of the puzzle working on their own section without it seeming upside down for anyone. That's the puzzle. I like that this is a rainbow puzzle with more texture than the gradient puzzles that I usually do. It was definitely more difficult than I expected, but I still finished it in under three hours, so not frustratingly hard. As I mentioned earlier, there is this one section where the edge isn't perfectly cut, so if you're going to hang it up on a dark wall, that's going to be pretty obvious. But I did appreciate that the pieces fit really tightly together, so it's easy to move the different sections around as you work on them. In fact, after smoothing it down, I was able to pick up the entire puzzle without it coming apart. costs $12 on Seiko's website. It's not too expensive, 
but as with anything, you get what you pay for. This is a great alternative to the more expensive gradient puzzles if you want a modern, colorful rainbow puzzle. But there were definitely a few quality issues. And actually, before I go, I just want to mention this other Seiko puzzle that I put together the other day. I love the colors and the design on this one. However, one of the pieces came out of the box with the image completely separated from the cardboard. This would be easy enough to glue back on, and obviously I'm so thankful to Seiko for sending me these puzzles to try out. But I just wanted to make sure to mention all of the quality issues just so that you guys can make an informed decision when you're deciding which puzzles you want to buy. So I would love to know if there are any other criteria about jigsaw puzzles that you want me to cover in in future review videos, or if there are any other jigsaw puzzle brands that you want me to do a deep dive into like I did here, feel free to leave those in the comments or right down below. If you want another review video, I actually already did one about a Cloudberries puzzle, so I'm going to link that at the end of this video. And make sure that you stay tuned for the one hour and the real time uh, time lapses of putting together this puzzle, which are going to be much more meditative and calming and not have my voice jabbering on in the background. <laughs> all right, I'll see you all next time.